Football presented by Old Trapper Beef Jerky live in New York City. It's Tuesday, the final day of January, January 31st. I'm Jamie Erdahl. It's Kyle Brandt, Peter Schrager, and Jason McCordy. Jay, how are you doing this morning? I'm doing amazing. I get to hang out with you guys mm -hmm. and I pretend, but no, it's pretty fun. So yeah. I'm, I'm having a good time. Yeah. You know, we're six months into this. These guys are six years into this. How are you feeling first season through? And now we are, find ourselves on the doorstep of you having to cover your first yeah. Super Bowl. Uh, I'm excited about the Super Bowl. Ask me in about a month how I'm doing when there's no more football to talk about. Yeah, I, I'm a little bit worried about you. It gets about. loose. You'll be fine. It's It'll great. It gets about loose. Fun stuff. Are you wearing orange because you're a Bengals fan? What is with the orange today? Yeah. Is there a significance? Broncos? What do you got in the... In the what, I love the orange, but is there any... Oh, uh, it just accentuates my color. There you mm. go. Oh, nice. Okay. Jay, very good. very good. Very <laughs> good. Um, well, until then, let's relish the fact that we still have football to talk about. Let's go to Lee Black. Lee Black. Lee Black. Lee Black. Patrick Mahomes and company overcame his high age. Sprain. Some people are like, he didn't have one. You could never have come back. Maybe he can. There's a okay. conspiracy. There was a conspiracy. <laughs> I love it. More conspiracy. Uh, uh, yep, uh, and it, d there was a depleted sideline, injuries all over the board, but they still beat the Bengals <laughs> and they advanced the Super Bowl 57. It was Patrick's fourth career playoff game with 300 plus passing yards against zero picks. Impressive games are nothing new for Mahomes statistically. Uh, he was the MVP of Super Bowl 54 after defeating the 49ers. Last postseason, he took an impressive Bills team to overtime and beat them. In the 2019 divisional game, he spotted the Texans 24 points before coming back to win 51-31. And then 2018, he threw half a dozen touchdowns against Pittsburgh. Second Casual. Start. So, right. So where does this AFC Championship game fall on the spectrum of, does that win? Injure down a ton of receivers, bum ankle. Is that the most satisfying win of Patrick Mahomes' career? Satisfying. Satisfying. And like those lists of games we put up there, the one at the top that said Super Bowl. Mm. Is it more satisfying than a Super Bowl? Mm. That's your question, Jay. Absolutely not. <laughs> a, a, a Super Bowl win, that confetti falling, celebrating. So many people have helped you along the journey, whether it was playing Pop Warner football, high school, and now they're all out there on the field celebrating with you. Mahomes grew up in Texas, grew up a diehard Cowboys fan. He missed the Super Bowls. He was born in 95, but he grew up hearing all about those teams. He probably imagined, hey, one day I may play for the Cowboys and hoist a Super Bowl trophy. And he got a chance to do that with the Kansas City Chiefs, obviously not with the Cowboys, but he got a chance to be on that field. His dad talked about the 2000 World Series. He was out there before the game catching fly balls in a championship game. That's what you dream about as a kid. You don't dream about a satisfying win because a team talked trash and you were down, uh, guys and all of that. Although in the moment, those are a lot of fun, a lot of trash talk. There is nothing more satisfying than being at the top of the mountain. You get to stand up there on that podium after the guy who doubted you, all the teams that talked about you, you get to sit, rub it all in their face and say, I am the king. And Mahomes got a chance to do that. And there was nothing more satisfying in a game than winning a championship. I'm with you. Super Bowl's amazing. But gosh, I think Sunday felt really good for me. Yeah, okay. Oh, okay. They talk so much smack. Burrowhead. Uh, they were favored. Everyone, this show talking Burrow or Mahomes, Burrow or Mahomes. And I had never seen Patrick like that after a game where he told Tracy Wilson, we're going to go back and we're going to take out, but uh, we're not going to do cigars. That's that's not what we do. We're not I, having it. We don't have, that, I mean, this, this was a different type <laughs> of win. This was a salty Patrick Mahomes, one that we had not seen. That Super Bowl is the greatest win of his career. Yeah. That's not the question. That was the greatest win of his career, and right. he would say that. And obviously, it, what it did for, for Chiefs fans, first Super Bowl in 50 years of coming so close and so short, it's the most amazing moment for Chiefs fans' lives. Satisfying, though? Underdogs at home? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I, I can make the argument, based on the way those Chiefs players responded, based on the way that, like, that one might have been the first time he's ever been doubted. Mm -hmm. And he overcame. Mm -hmm. You could add in all the elements of all the underdog stuff. But I'm going to go with yes, mm. that that is in the conversation. Mm. How about that? In the conversation, okay. It's up there. Mm. I think it's the adjective in the question that is kind of uh, tricking everybody. Because, uh, yeah, you know, like, and how you approach, like, what does a satisfying win mean to you? Like, it's not electric. It's not thrilling. Mm -hmm. It's not biggest accomplishment. Proudest. Yeah. Proudest. Yeah, yeah. Satisfying. Satisfying. Yeah. Satisfying. To Peter's point, there's a post-game clip in particular that I want to bring up once again. Patrick Mahomes, not with Tracy Wilson. This is an hour later at his press conference. A lot of trash talk coming from a lot of different places, I think. No one picked us to win. If so, it was like 5% of people. 
Um, and uh, we think we've built up enough uh, enough respect to, to have a chance to go out and win every game. So uh, whenever you feel like you're the underdog, when you're playing at Arrowhead Stadium, uh, it gets guys ready to go. You know when you're like in the thick of it with your, your like, like a ba new baby at home or like a new puppy and you like go to your partner and you're like, I, I took the dog out a hundred times and you've taken it out one time. Apparently like only 5% of people picked him to win. That's not five. But like he drummed it up in yeah. his head yeah. and it became five. And that's great because he got himself to a point where he felt like they were the underdogs, that they were not being picked. But when I heard that, it really made me laugh because I was like, five, it is it? Is it five? Are we there? All right. Like, we'll, we'll go into it because you, sometimes you get down in the dumps. People are just so hard on you. You have changed more diapers than your partner has with a yeah. new baby. That you're like, I've done this a hundred. Only 5% picked us. I don't think it was five. But, like, sure, if that's what makes it the most satisfying one of your career, Patrick, then so be it. It's 5%. We do a pregame show on Fox. Six of us made the picks. Five of us took the Chiefs. So I don't, I don't know. I don't, and I think that was, that was the 5%. Yeah, I, don't, yeah. I think yeah. there was five or six took the Chiefs, not the Bengals. Yes. So that's, yes. <laughs> So you guys, you guys did the diapers. That, that, I guess. Yeah. 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 In my house, there it's, it's the dishes. There might as well be a scoreboard above the sink. Yes. You know that one they have at the Ram Stadium? Like that's in our kitchen. We have that right. halo on the Oculus. And there are we some. An Oculus <laughs> the dishes. And there's some days where you just keep count of those kind of things. And yeah. like that's not in particular. Was that today, Mom? Yeah. I hear it. I, I, I'm into the word satisfying too. You know what? I, I think this this win against the Bengals, like. I think that day was like a huge pain in the ass for Mahomes. I think he's going to look back and be like, I hated that game. I felt terrible the whole game. I was hurting. Like, I, I think if you look at the Jordan flu game, I think you would ask him to be like, I'm miserable that game. It was my least favorite game. Mm. My, my favorite game is I went into the garden as a rookie and scored 33. That was satisfying. I, I don't know how Willis Reed comes out, but he probably hated that game in the sense. He was miserable. He was in pain. It was a very difficult game for him to win. The game that I think is the most satisfying is the most mythical of all the Patrick Mahomes wins. And that's the divisional last year. That's Chiefs Bills. Because this is the I am inevitable. Nothing can stop me. Not space or time or 13 seconds. And this was also smiting this giant Buffalo Bills machine that was being constructed right in front of him. Mm -hmm. And it was no matter what you do, Josh Allen, I, I, I'll still beat you. There's no way. Uh, we're going to keep on winning. I think this was the most satisfying. I think, like, there's a lot of other words to put on the ones from last year, or from this, from last week, rather. Gritty, toughest, um, you know, uh, proudest even, or maybe most personal. Yeah. Um, but I think to put a bow on it and to do the eye roll Tom Brady quote, the most satisfying was always the next one. Mm -hmm. And I think, listen, that, that win over the Niners, like, ugly game. They were down early, sloppy, pulled kind of a crazy play out of their backside to win it. Uh, and they beat the Niners team. They had no history with, no animosity with. The context wasn't there. There's a lot of context this year about everybody's coming for the AFC throne. Your yesterday's news. No Tyreek. You name it. Um, I think the Super Bowl this year will be the most satisfying and the sweetest because, A, it's a second one, whole different class. And, B, there's just a million storylines. Yeah. And at some point... Travis Kelsey's going to retire, and then it'll be, how about now, Patrick Mahomes? Yeah. It'll be that, too. I think the Super Bowl will be the most, but until now, that Guess building was crazy. As of yesterday, the Chiefs are underdogs in the Super Bowl <laughs> yet again, right? and they can put that, that giant boulder on their shoulder. There Coming in as five-time defending, you know, a AFC West, whatever, seven-time AFC West champions, and they're still underdogs in the Super Bowl to a mm. team that hasn't been there in five years. Mm. I feel like Mahomes in the AFC is like Jon Snow when he, like, pulls his sword what? back out, and he's like, keep, here we go again. He's oh, standing gift? there, and he's yeah. just, like, waving ring against and they they just keep coming for him and he's quarterback rule in the nfl and that emergency quarterback that they used to have on those teams so that this wouldn't be the case this would be a great opportunity to bring in our guy scott pioli who is live in mobile alabama there he is. scott let's start Here with that are. and the basics take us through that whole third quarterback rule the history of it and what your take is and gosh that could have come in handy for a lot of us watching that game on sunday and so, Peter, uh, first I want to start at the idea of so many fans often ask, there's 53 players on the roster. Why aren't all 53 active? And years ago when they moved the roster up to 53, one of the things that the league office and coaches and people thought it was a player safety issue because the feeling was the more players that are available – the more specialists that are available. And I don't mean long snappers and kickers. I'm talking about pass rushers, people that can increase the speed of the game, extra wide receivers. And the NFL understands that a faster game is a more dangerous game. So that's where that starts. So teams were allowed to have 45 players active. And then in 1991, the NFL decided, okay, 
teams need to have an extra quarterback. So they created what was called the third quarterback rule. And what happened was you had 45 players that were active, and you could designate one player that was truly a quarterback to be your third quarterback. And if that player had to enter the game for any reason or did enter the game for any reason within the first three quarters of the game, that meant quarterbacks one and two could not re-enter the game. So really what it was was to give teams an extra roster spot in case there was an injury where they needed to go to a third quarterback. But then in 2011, when we got a new collective bargaining agreement, the idea was this. The union and the league agreed, listen, we're going to go to 46 players. We're going to give you that 46 spot. It could be a third quarterback. It could be any other position. So really what they did was they left it up to the individual coaches and the individual teams to decide what and who they wanted that 46 player to be. And that's how we've gotten where we are. But now, as we know, there's a lot of talk about adding that extra third quarterback spot, which is only going to be a third quarterback. Okay, Scott, now let's go back. Under that old rule, you said, of the 45-man roster and the third quarterback rule,